What is your name, please? I am Sir Guy Campbell. What is your name, please? My name is Sir Guy Campbell. What is your name, please? My name is Sir Guy Campbell. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Sir Guy Campbell and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. First of all, actress and singing star, Miss Polly Bergen. Next, actor and singing star, Mr. Don Amici. Then, actress and singing star, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Tom Poston. <laughs> but by no means least, even though finally, believe me, by no I mean, means least. I he gets least. all the applause. <laughs> well, you know, he milks it. Okay, panel, would you kindly... There we go. We never should have started. <laughs> Would you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Sir Guy Campbell, a Scotsman, am fourth baronet and nominal head of my branch of the Campbell clan. My home is in St. Andrews, Scotland, site of the world's most famous golf course. This is appropriate. Golf has been my main interest since the day I played my first game when I was two and a half years old. I am a golf course architect. I have designed numerous famous courses from Ireland to Madagascar. I am in this country designing my first American golf course. Signed, Sir Guy Campbell. <laughs> now, panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be Sir Guy Campbell, famous golf course architect. Are you all ready, gentlemen? Okay, we'll start the questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, number one, in a, in a high wind, isn't it very hard to play golf with a kilt on? <laughs> not at all, not at all. No? It, it's a need. Oh, I see. Number two, uh, uh, let's see. What is the diameter of a, of a golf cup? Four and a quarter inches. Four and a quarter inches. Number three, what is the diameter? Four and a, quarter, four and a half inches. Thank four you. and a half. Number one. What fraction are you going to use? Between the two. Between the two. <laughs> we good? I didn't no. hear what he said. Between, Between the, two. the two. Four and four and, half, four and nine. And number two, uh, uh, what, uh, what woods, how many woods does the average golfer use? Three. Uh, number three, how many woods are there actually? There are four, but uh, normally three are used. Number one, how many woods are there actually? Four. Don? Number one, which golf ball is larger, the English or the American? The American. Uh, number two, how many times did Ben Hogan play in the uh, English Open before he won it? Once. Once only. In the Once only he played. And he won. Uh, number three, what was the uh, par of Wingfoot where they just played the, uh, the American Open? The par was 70. Uh, number, uh, number one, how many clubs uh, is a golfer allowed to carry in competition? Fourteen. Number two, how many clubs is a golfer allowed to carry in competition? Fourteen. Number, Kitty? Number one, uh, it says here that you're uh, about to design a golf course here. Where is it going to be? Sides in Irvington, Virginia. Irvington, Virginia? Yes. Number two, um, what a famous American financier had a home near Balmoral? Number three, do you know? No. Number one, do you know? Carnegie. What? Carnegie. Carnegie. Number two, do you shoot grouse? I do not. Do you, number two? Yes. What's a butt? It's the shooting equivalent of a trap. Number three, uh, how old is your title? Uh, 250 years. Can you give me the full name of the Duke of Argyle? Well, his lordship, <clears throat> Duke of Argyle. Well, he's got a lot more names. Tom Poston, for one. <laughs> I wish I knew, could I could ask... You know, <laughs> you know. 
Uh, number one, it says that you played your first game of golf when you were two and a half years old. How old was your caddy? <laughs> <laughs> My father would be about uh, in his early 30s. Ah, I see. It was your pop, eh? Number three, uh, what are the three branches of the Campbell clan? And don't tell me tomato, chicken, and vegetable. <laughs> I mean, the three branches of the clan. Uh, the Brittle Vein, Cordor, and Argyle. Thank you. Uh, number two, what causes a golfer's drive to fade? I beg your pardon? What causes a golfer's drive to fade? A slice, I would say. Possibly age, too, might have something to do with it. But it's time to vote right now. So without consultation, panel, will you please mark your ballots? And select, as you always do, number one, number two, or number three. Remember, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, all voted. Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, I don't know who lives on that large estate that Kitty was talking about, or if there is a large estate that she was talking about. <laughs> But number one was the only one that said anything, so I voted for him, because I don't really know too much about golf. You don't? Nope. You shoot grouse? <laughs> nope, but I know what a butt is. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, G. Whom did you select? I voted for number three. He seemed to be, uh, uh, have the best knowledge of the game of golf, I felt. Kitty? I voted for number one. Because uh, I think it was J.P. Morgan who had the house near Balmoral. Maybe Sir Carnegie did, too. But number one looks to me like Sir James Barry. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, what about your vote? I feel like such a fool. That never occurred to me to vote for a man because he looks like somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for... Who? See there? Uh, that's, that's Mrs. Campbell out there. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I voted for number two because uh, he has definitely the outdoor look of a man who spends his time on a golf course. I caught a quick glimpse of his hands, and his hands looked like they might have gripped a golf club. Among other things, he also answered correctly. Okay, there you have it now. We've made up our minds of you. We hope you have. And we find out right now which one confirms the correct answer and whether or not you have selected correctly as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the real golf course architect. So will the real Sir Guy Campbell please stand up. Thank you very much. Oh dear, Sir Guy, that's a lovely spot you're designing the course in. That ties in, it's a beautiful place. Number one, may we have your name, sir, and what you really do? My name is David Bailey Morrison. I'm a resident of White Plains, New York. I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful occupation you're involved in right now. Number three, what is your name, sir? What do you do? My name is Henry Boland. I'm a commercial sales officer for the British Overseas Airways Corporation. Thank you, sir. Well, in checking our score here, we find that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Marlboro. Gentlemen, a good evening's play, I would say. Thank you very much for being with us. On your way out, you will find a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Good night, and good luck to you. Yeah. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Leela Rao. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Leela Rao. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Leela Rao. Panel, will you follow along with your next affidavit copy? I, Mary Leela Rao, was born in Bombay, India. I am now attending college here in the United States. My father is a former track star at the University of Kansas. I got my interest in athletics from him. Back home, I am considered to be one of the most outstanding women sprinters and hurdlers in Asia. I was India's only female representative to the 1956 Olympics. Signed, Mary Leela Rao. Now, are you all set, ladies? Well, panel, you just heard these three girls all claim to be Mary Leela Rao, track star from India, 
And we will start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, what is the fastest a man has ever run a mile? I believe it's under four minutes. Number two, what is the fastest a woman has ever run a mile? I think it's about five minutes. Now, how come the girls always catch the fellas and they, don't, they run? <laughs> well, it's a problem in physics. <laughs> Number three, you live in uh, Bombay? Yes, I do. What is Bombay duck? Pardon? Hmm? She Would you do that? Oh. Do you know what Bombay duck is, number one? No, I don't. I mean, number one. I think it's a kind of fish. Uh, number two, how did um, India do in the Olympics in 1956? Um, we won hockey. Hockey? Ice hockey? No, no. Field hockey. Ah. <laughs> number three, where do you go to college? I go to Idaho State University. And where is that? Tom in Moscow. In Moscow? <laughs> Moscow, <what>? Tom? <laughs> Moscow must be, must be Idaho. Hello there, Tom number, Poston. Yes, number three, if it must be Idaho. Is that not true? It is. Number, number uh, one, where is the University of Kansas, please? Uh, somewhere around Topeka, uh, Lawrence. It's, uh, yes, it's in there. It's in the state. It's around in... Yes. In the <laughs> <laughs> Number two, where is, um, is uh, the University of Kansas located? In Lawrence. Number three? Lawrence, Kansas. Thank you. Uh, Number three, in what track event would a uh, participant be good if it were said that he could knock pennies off the top? He could knock what off? Pennies off the... Knock pennies off the top. In a hurdle. Thank you, number three. Uh, number four. I'm mean, number number two. Yes. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> All right, Holly Bergen. Oh, gee, this was the one that was going to give me absolutely um, no information. <laughs> uh, number one. Uh, what is the nickname for the University of Kansas? Jay Hoker. Uh, number two, how high is a hurdle? Um, two feet, six inches for girls. Number three, uh, it, it says here in your affidavit that you are a, a sprinter. Mm -hmm. What distance would you run as a sprinter? A hundred, uh, hundred meters, two hundred meters. Uh, number one, uh, how, how much would a hundred meters be as far as something I would understand? About 110 yards. 110 yards. Don Amici, please. Uh, number two, uh, how far are the Olympic uh, high hurdles for girls? For girls, it's two feet six inches. No, how, how, uh, the what's distance. the distance of the race? How far do they run? 80 meters. 80 meters? Yes. Uh, number three, how far do they run? 80 meters. Uh, number two, how many uh, low hurdles are there? Um, about eight. Eight. Number three, how many are there? Eight in an 80 meter. Uh, number two, how many hurdles can you knock over and still be uh, uh, eligible for uh, winning the race? Um, you, now you can uh, knock them all. <laughs> it would be a busy little race, and it's time to vote right now. So without consultation, will you please mark your ballots? Well. <laughs> Things get simpler all the time, Polly. So please vote and select number one, number two, or number three. Or number four. No, or number four, yeah. <laughs> okay, panel, have you voted? Polly, whom did you vote this time? Well, I was already to vote for somebody else, but number oh. three suddenly started offering free information at the end when I started discussing about you could still be in the race if you knocked over hurdles, and number three, whom I wasn't, you know, who hadn't answered the question, suddenly started offering me information. And now I should say I voted for number one, That's but right. I, I voted for number three because of that. Okay, Don, what about your selection? Well, I voted for number three because I voted for number three last time. Consistency is the mother of. Kitty, what about you? I voted for number one. Last time I voted on a literary basis, this time on a gastronomical basis, because number one knew what Bombay duck was, the mm -hmm. kind of fish. Tom? That's true, but I voted for number three this time because she looks a little like Sir James Barry. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the votes are all in and the minds are 
<laughs> All made up. Uh, and, uh... As I say, we'll check with your score at home, too, because you compare notes with us as we find out right now which of these three girls is the real track star from India. <laughs> so will the real Mary Leela Rao please stand up? Polly, you were right. You should have voted for number one after that reasoning. <laughs> number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? Uh, my name is Mother Jaffrey. Um, I am a housewife. I have a baby who is four months old and a husband. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what is your name and what do you do? Oh, my name is Rana Ansari. I'm from Pakistan and I'm a student at Hunter College here in the city of New York. Good evening, too. There were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Marlboro. Seems to be a standard thing tonight. On your way out, you will uh, pass on your way out and find yourselves a little token of our show. And uh, thank you very much for being with us. Good night and good luck. And now, panel, let's meet our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Otto Brown. What is your name, please? My name is Otto Brown. What is your name, please? My name is Otto Brown. Again, please follow along panel with this affidavit. I, Otto Brown, have been in the National Park Service for 32 years. I have served an Olympic National Park in Washington State, and I've also been both district ranger and wildlife ranger at Yosemite. Currently, I am the chief ranger at Yellowstone National Park. I will be responsible for the conduct and safety of the more than one and a half million vacationers who are expected to visit the park this season. Signed, Otto Brown. Now, <laughs> panel, here we have three gentlemen who you heard all claim to be Otto Brown, chief ranger at Yellowstone National Park. You all set, gentlemen? Okay, let's start this round with Tom Poston. Tom, please. Thank you, Bud. Number one, could you give us uh, two other names for the mountain lion? A cougar hmm. is one name, and uh, a puma, puma is another one. Thank you. Do you know more? <laughs> uh, number two, how many rattlesnakes can you name? Oh, there's a diamondback rattlesnake, uh, a sidewinder, And I suppose we might call him the regular rattlesnake. He's the bigger fellow. What's the name of the bigger fellow, number one? The Florida rattlesnake uh, is the largest, I believe. Of course, I haven't been in Florida, but uh, I think the Florida rattlesnake... <laughs> Could you let us have the... one more? One other rattlesnake, pine rattler, is another common term. Polly? Uh, number one, in Yellowstone, what do you do if you see a bear near you? Do you ask that question from the standpoint of me personally or a visitor? Uh, a visitor. <laughs> a visitor usually uh, violates the regulations and throws them a peanut. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, number two, what, what, what would be your, your idea of, of, of safety if you should see a, a bear in Yellowstone? Uh, keep the car doors closed, stay in your car, and roll up the windows is the safe precaution. Oh, I see. Well, what if you're in a convertible? <laughs> Drive on. What? <laughs> Drive on. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're walking? Uh, perhaps throw a stick of wood, a rock. You throw something at these poor animals? I would if it were a bear. And I'd <laughs> I'd wait till you hear from the ASPC or whatever it is. Today. Number two, um, there, uh, where are the hot springs, the, the, the things that shoot up and the boil and the smoke and everything, in Yosemite or in Yellowstone? In Yellowstone. <clears throat> Number three, where are the big trees that you drive through? In Yosemite, they have a lot of the large trees. Don Amici. Number two, what uh, mountain pass leads into Yosemite from uh, Lake Momo? Well, you ought to know you were there in 1938. <laughs> but, <clears throat> what pass? It's the Merced Pass. Number three, what pass leads into Yosemite? From Merced Lake? Pass. 
Number uh, one, what pass leads into it? The Tioga Pass. Pardon me? Tioga Pass. Uh, number uh, two, are you in civil service? We're under the, uh, the Department of Interior. Number three, are you in civil service? I'm in the Department of Interior also. Uh, number two, uh, what is the uh, difference between a park ranger and a forest ranger? Well, it's according to the entire setup. The, uh, Kitty? Number one, how often does Old Faithful go off? Well, the average is uh, about 64 minutes between eruptions. Number two, uh, is that your timing too? Well, on an average, that's correct. Sometimes it goes off in 40 minutes or 44, and sometimes as long as 90 minutes. Number but three, can you tell me what makes a geyser guys? <laughs> Doll. <laughs> oh, oh, very rock. good. Hot vol uh, live volcanoes underneath. Underneath. And number water three, runs into can it. you also number two? Can you tell me what's the difference between a grizzly bear and a, and a, and a brown black bear? I know he's going to buzz that thing. What's the difference? Well, the grizzly bear is larger and he's brown. Yeah. The black bear is uh, black. He also can small. be brown, red, or uh, platinum blonde. I shouldn't have asked the question. <laughs> Leave it on that. Help at all. There you have it. It is time once again to vote. So will you once more mark your ballots and vote thereby for number one, number two, or number three. I couldn't just leave now. No, you couldn't no. just leave now. <laughs> well, because he, they did it again to me. Number two said that he saw Don Amici walking through somewhere. I don't know anything about <laughs> the or anything. I couldn't pick the right ranger, but I figured if he saw him, maybe he was a ranger and he was a tourist. So I voted for number two. He was a bear. And if you don't vote for number two, I'm leaving. <laughs> I want to change my vote. <laughs> Leaving. I voted for number one because Tioga was the right right answer for the past. Okay. I voted Kitty? for number one because really? I thought it said Tioga. Well, and I thought that was the right answer. What Kitty? did you say about that? There you are. Tioga, you said I got so excited. Tioga, Tioga. Well, I thought his name was Tioga. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's why I voted for him. Okay, and Tom Poston? I voted for number one also, but for various reasons. If you notice, he has uh, very much of an outdoor look about him. Again? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that, and too. I suspect he plays golf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it. Now let's check up on ourselves and see whether we're right or wrong as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the real chief ranger at Yellowstone National Park. Oh, don't. Will the real Otto Brown please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> number three. Yeah. Here it is. It's number three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm leaving. I'm glad I'm leaving. <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name, please, and what you do? My name is William E. Coon. I'm a master sergeant in the regular army. Thank you, sir. Saw Don Amici in 1938. <laughs> I don't because I'm a poor truth. loser. He's right. He didn't have to tell the truth. <laughs> Number three, what is he your name, there. please? What do you do? My name is Bern Blevins. I am a salesman with Westinghouse Electric International Company. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, we've checked up on our score now and seen that there are one, two, three correct votes this time. Only one incorrect vote. Handled it real well tonight. And on this one, Super. and uh, that means a total of $250 for Marlboro. Gentlemen, thanks very much for being with us. Good night and good luck on your way. Stop and pick up a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Night. That's it, except to take time to say bon voyage to Polly, who's leaving on a well-needed vacation and rest. Have a goodie, Polly. <laughs> I should have left yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to us soon. Jay Meadows will be sitting in for you while you go. I've heard of Lisa leaving in a blaze of glory, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> good night, panel. Good night. Good night, Bud. Good night, Bud. Saying good night for Marlboro, reminding all of you to tell the truth. Night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Dixon, Bill Cotton production in association with the CBS Television Network. It's Greg and Gone by Wilma.